And welcome back to Square Off. After reports of apparent abuses of the state's charter school law, after apparent support for reforms from the governor and attorney general, and then Senate passage of a modest Republican package of reforms. Charter school reform now appears to be dead at the Capitol. How did that happen? Joining us to answer that question and many more as we review the week's news, Megan Cox, Republican political consultant and Lincoln Strategy Group, and Lori Roberts, columnist at the Arizona Republic. Good to see you both. There was a call for reform after an, an award-winning Arizona Republic series detailed charter school owners making millions, insider dealing to line pockets, both of which are legal uh, under state law and something that's not legal, cases of outright thievery. Uh, Lori, why is this bill dead or is it just sleeping? It is certainly not sleeping, it is dead. Republicans have long supported charter schools and in fact had long turned a blind eye to some of the problems that reporter Craig Harris spent 2018 highlighting. Um, and they just were not about to go and enact any sort of meaningful reform. Initially, the Democrats signed on to the bill with the idea, I think, or I hope, to strengthen it, and when it became apparent that that wasn't going to happen, they bailed on the bill. Um, you watched in the Senate as Republicans turned down amendment after amendment for what would most people would think would be common sense things, like imposing a cap on administrative expenses of about 10%. That seems to me to be a reasonable thing, but the Republicans thought it was a step far too far. And yet, the bill passed the Senate. Uh, Senator Kate Brophy McGee sponsored it. It got through the Senate largely on party lines, I believe, was in the House. And then it met House Speaker Rusty Bowers. And Megan, listen closely. I'm going to read what, what, what Rusty Bowers said uh, last week after he refused to give the bill a hearing in the House. First, he declared, quote, I'm a decades-long supporter of charter schools. And then he went on. The bill incorporated numerous changes from Democrats who would rather see the charter school model fail than be improved. Members of both parties now feel the bill either goes too far or not far enough. Unfortunately, the bill doesn't have the votes to pass in the House because partisan gamesmanship is more important to some than improved accountability. That was the second statement Rusty Bauer sent out that day after his first statement kind of didn't say what I think he wanted to say. Why is Rusty Bauer's blocking it? What sense do you make of that statement? At the end of the day, I mean, I'm a huge charter school advocate, and, I, and I'm very much supportive of school choice. I think Rusty Bowers um, had to take a look at where the bill was at. Uh, I think with any good public policy, you're trying to pull from all the different sides. I know Democrats are really critical of Kate Brophy McKee's support of bringing in the Arizona Charter School Board to help craft the legislation. But I do think public policy needs to have both pieces involved. So why it ends up dead is you have two, essentially two groups coming to just complete stalemate in terms of what they want to see out of the final legislation. But yet it passed the Senate. Couldn't it have passed the House by a 31-29 margin, which is, you know, straight party line? You couldn't have lost but one Republican mm -hmm. vote in order to get that through. And you weren't going to have it because some Republicans don't want to do anything. So you had to have a coalition. But we not for this bill. This bill I've called it. Weep not. Weep not. <laughs> Don't cry bill. for me, Argentina. Weep not for this bill. It didn't really do much. It did one, in my opinion, one substantive thing that is a loss, and that is to allow the attorney general to come in and investigate cases, more, more leeway to do that. But the bill didn't do anything about this, what I would call the legal looting of charter schools by charter school operators, where they skim off tons and tens of millions of dollars to enrich themselves at the expense of their students. Did nothing for that. The, now, the Charter School Board has taken some action, I think, mm -hmm. to clean up things a bit. Am I right? Correct. And I think if we see anything come from, I, mean, I think there's still, not why the bill, this bill in its current form is dead, potentially there could be um, funds assigned in the executive budget that gives some more um, oversight. And so I do think, you know, the Charter School recognizes that there are problems too. There's, there's nothing that's ever perfect in society. And so they recognize there's problems, they're going to try to help clean that up. What oversight though can you have when you have a bill that allows them to take however much money off the top that they want to a charter school owner? When you have a bill that allows them to stack the governing boards that are gonna to have to be created with their own various friends and relatives, when you have a bill that still allows them to, to operate side businesses on no bid contracts, mm -hmm. Um, all of that leeway is still there in the bill. 
And frankly, I, one of the things I love to see change is having um, boards that are independent made up of parents that aren't that address that problem that you just suggested with having your own friends and family involved in those boards. There are a lot of reforms that can be done um, without gutting the system. Do either of you see Doug Ducey using his muscle to get some money in the budget or get something through the legislature this year on charter reform? Yes or no? Uh, no. You know, I think he's very deliberative and I think they recognize that there's a problem. Again, there could be some executive funds assigned when it comes to uh, more oversight. All right.